So good, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the informational session for the Moshri Science uh, program. We will wait for about one more minute for a few others to join in. Okay, good morning, um, students, faculty, staff. Uh, thank you for joining the informational session for the Moshri Science program. Uh, I would like to introduce the program director of the uh, the acting program director, Professor John Kirksky. I would like to say just wave hi. Hello. Okay. I would like to introduce the student navigator for the Allied Health programs, Dr. Sharon Murphy. Good morning. I would like to introduce Jeez. our esteemed adjunct faculty, Dr. Donna Austin. And I would like to introduce our very esteemed adjunct faculty, Professor Angel King. And I would like to introduce our IT expert, Jay Murrow. Okay, so um, thank you very much for your interest in the Moultrie Science Program uh, at the University of the District of Columbia. My name is Dr. Bushra Ahmed Saeed, and I am the director of the Division of Nursing, Allied Health, Life, and Physical Sciences. In our division, we have four degree programs. We have the Nursing Associate of Applied Science Nursing, Associate of Applied Science Respiratory Therapy, Associates of Applied Science, Motri Science, and Associate of Science Natural Sciences with a concentration of chemistry and biology that can be uh, transferred for a four year program at the main campus. So today we are going to discuss about the mortuary science program. We're gonna discuss the carriers, the method of application, the program, the, the rigor of the program and the rewards of doing an associates program at the University of the District of Columbia. So without, uh, without further ado, I would like to pass the mic to Professor John Kirksky, uh, or Professor Donna Austin, or whoever is going to go first. Um, I think we have a presentation. Dr. Austin will be first. Right. So, Dr. Austin, can you please share your screen? Good morning, everyone. Let's see here. My, um, I needed my share highlighted because it's not showing uh, where I can share my screen. Okay, uh, Jay, can you please, uh, Donna Austin and John Kirksky have presentation? Okay. I just made uh, them a co-host. Thank you. Okay. It's still not highlighting. Hold on, let me go up at the top. Hold on a second. Share. No. It still won't let me share. Okay, there we go. Share content. Let me know if you can see my screen. It's starting to share. Okay. All see right. It. Okay, thank you. All right, all right, here we go. Again, good morning. My name is Dr. Donna Austin. I'm a licensed mortician with over 40 years of experience here in the District of Columbia. I'd like to welcome you all to our program. And I'm going to be giving you a overview of the mortuary profession. And then I will turn the presentation over to um, Professor Kirksey, and we ask that you hold all your questions until the end of our presentation. Thank you. So our objective for the mortuary science program is about having our professors to provide you the guidance you need as we introduce you to what I call a rewarding profession. And it enables you to create new knowledge and further the growth of our industry. So our job is to help you create new knowledge to develop, enhance your skills in the profession and also challenge you to a new level of systematic critical thinking. In other words, so 
when we look at uh, the different beliefs um, in, in the industry, uh, you'll be able to assess um, existing beliefs and also create new ones if necessary in, in the field. And why are mortuary science careers important? Well, for several reasons. It provides a community service to the bereaved families, offers intellectual and emotional challenges, provide guidance to grieving families, offers an opportunity to pursue other areas related to the industry. And some of those other areas where we talk about could be uh, as an embalmer, um, you can look at being a bereavement counselor, going to pathology, or perform duties as an autopsy assistant, or use the courses toward pre-med if you decide to go further into science. Now, some of the pros and cons of mortuary science career are, it's an important career for society because we all know that the dead have to be um, buried or a final disposition. We make decent money. We work with many different cultures. Um, again, there are other career opportunities that you can follow. And it's a satisfying career for those who don't like a traditional uh, type of job, because in this industry, it's never a, a boring uh, job. The cons about funeral services is that we do work long hours. We're on call uh, basically 24 seven. We deal with difficult people during this time because like weddings, funerals are the same. You have uh, what I call, um, you know, family members that can be like um, the bridezilla in a, in a wedding. Um, it's very emotionally demanding and you are considered an essential employee. And then you have to learn how to do work life balance because that can be a, a, a challenging part of the career. But overall, it's a rewarding job with its various challenges, but it comes with job security. And now I'm going to turn it over to Professor Kirksey so that he can um, tell you about the program. Thank you. Okay, I'm Professor John Kirksey. I'm a professor of mortuary science, obviously, at the University of the District of Columbia. Um, I've been a licensed mortician since uh, the year 2000. And it's been a very rewarding experience. I've been teaching at the university uh, since uh, 2010. And I'm going to attempt to share my screen right now to give you the um, requirements to enter the program at the University of the District of Columbia. All right, can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. All right. Can, can you do slide show, please? I'm, I'm sorry. Do, did you need me to do something, Dr. Saeed? Uh, just uh, if you can do slide show, please, uh, on the bottom right. I don't have anything on the bottom right. Um, okay, right there where your arrow was. Right here. That, that's okay, doctor. It's okay, Professor. Davis. You can continue, please. Okay. All right. At the University of District of Columbia, we're in the division of nursing, allied health, life, and physical sciences. For admissions, the application cycle opens on November 1st and closes March 1st for the following fall semester. The location when we're not virtual is building 44, room 215 at 4200 Connecticut Avenue, Northwest Washington, DC. Your contact person for the time being is me, um, Professor John Kirksey, and my email is uh, john.kirksey, that's K-I-R-K-S-E-Y, at udc.edu. 
Please write that down. The admission requirements. The following guidelines must be followed when pursuing the mortuary science degree program at the University of the District of Columbia Community College. One, you must contact the University of the District of Columbia Community College and complete an admissions application to the community college. This is required for new, returning, and transfer applicants. The link is www.udc.edu forward slash admissions. Number two, if college courses are taken at another college or university, please submit official transcripts to the University of the District of Columbia Community College Registrar's Office for transfer credit review. Number three, admission requirements to the Mortuary Science Program include a successful completion of all pre-mortuary coursework with a grade of a C or better and a GPA of at least 2.75. That's for your prerequisite courses prior to your mortuary science program application. Okay, so some of you may have a GPA that may be less than than 2.75. However, that's why the um, the review is important because you may have been much a much better student in your prerequisite courses. So that's what we will be um, grading you uh, or, or, or deriving your GPA from is those is the uh, prerequisite courses. So uh, just because you might have below a 2.75 does not mean you will be automatically excluded from the program. And we'll have to make those computations to, to verify that um, you are or are not eligible. And if you and if it is below 2.75 for your prerequisite courses, all you have to do is uh, retake a course. Let's say that you got a C and if you get an A in it, that, that should probably um, boost your GPA enough to be uh, a candidate for the program. Now, an official transcript must be submitted with the application as evidence of successful completion of pre-mortuary coursework unless the application has completed, excuse me, unless the applicant has completed all their coursework at the University of the District of Columbia. The next point, all science and technology courses that's anatomy and physiology, one, lecture and lab, fundamentals of chemistry, lecture and lab, must be passed within five years of the first date of enrollment into the mortuary science program. Now, some of you may be wondering, why do we put a time limit on it? The reason we have a time limit is because <clears throat> In the sciences, unless you're using that information every day, you tend to uh, forget what you've learned. Okay, and, and as the more time passes, the more you forget. And that's especially important with your anatomy courses, because that's almost like completely learning a foreign language. So that is why we uh, have a, a, a time limit of five years, when in actuality, if you're not using the information you've learned in the anatomy class, probably after three years, you two or three years, you've probably forgotten it. But we give you a grace period of five years. Submission, your next thing is to submit, <clears throat> excuse me, is the submission of a typed one page, page essay, why I want to be a funeral director. Next is submission of at least two 
confidential letters of recommendation using the official recommendation forms included in the mortuary science application packet. At least one recommendation letter must be from a professor, preferably a science professor. And that is because we want to know how you perform in your science classes, because although you may see a funeral director dressed in a nice suit and driving a usually a Cadillac or a hearse and getting out of that vehicle to take a body into the into the church, uh, that is, is a part of our industry that is almost like show business. Okay, that looks simple, and that is uh, simple enough on its own merits. However, before you can get that body to that point in that church, you are a scientist. Okay, so that's why um, you know you're going to put all your chemistry and anatomy and physiology to, together, even even a little bit of math. Okay, microbiology and pathology, all of those th things come into into play before we can get that that case to the to the to the church now uh, or mosque or synagogue now uh, for letters that are not written by professors the writer must know the applicant in a professional capacity for at least one year okay so that's pretty much self-explanatory people must know you for at least a year because it might be easy for someone to hide who they are for, you know, two, three months. Okay. But it's pretty hard for somebody to hide who they really are after a year has passed or within a year. Now, you also need proof of a physical health examination performed by a licensed health care provider. And this will include vaccinations, which are required as part of the physical examination and are checked annually. You'll need an MMR, which is measles, mumps, and rubella, a tuberculosis vaccine, not older than one year, hepatitis B, poliomyelitis, and tetanus. The initial vaccination followed by a booster within the last 10 years. You will also need proof of the physical examination and vaccinations that must be submitted to the University Health Services, that it will be in Building 44, Room A02, on their official form included in the Mortuary Science Application Packet. Now, the contact person is Nurse Mercy Ojumu. And her email is mercy.ojumu at udc.edu. Now, uh, submission of the results of an annual criminal background clearance check from Global Investigative Services. The background check is completed electronically, including the submission of a payment of the exam upon the applicant's name being submitted by the Mortuary Science Program Director to Global Investigative Services, 1700 Rockville Pike, Suite 230. Rockville, Maryland, 20852. And their phone number is 301-589-0088. With their website being www.gispi.com. That's Global Investigative Services. And they will, Global Investigative Services will send you your background results uh, directly to University of the District of Columbia Community College. Now, 
The next thing you would need is uh, a drug screening and um, perform the 09 panel drug screening, including a test for the following drugs, opioids, THC or cannabinoids, amphetamines, PCP, and cocaine, including its derivatives. And they will be with uh, Metro Lab, which is located at 3422 Georgia Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., 20010. And their phone number is 202 234 1339. And please submit the results to the UDC Health Services and retain a copy of the records. Now, you might wonder why we're having people do background checks, things such as this. This, we're not really, um, this is more to protect the student, you as a student, okay? And the reason why I say to protect you as a student, because in our field, you have to acquire a license. And um, in order to, uh, acquire that license, you cannot have a, a, a background where it might be questionable uh, as to drug use because one, you will be um, able to acquire embalming fluids and other chemicals. So it's to protect the student in that we don't want your student to, to go through a two and a half year program only to find out at the end that they are not going to be eligible to be a funeral director. So that's the way you have to look at it. Don't look at us as, as trying to exclude people because that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to have it so you won't be wasting your, your time. You can go and pursue another degree where if you have that type of um, uh, things in your background where it will not hinder you. So we don't want you wasting your time or money with something that you will not be allowed to participate in. Now, um, also in the process, you will have to have an, you will be interviewed uh, by the admission progression and graduation committee. You will need to supply us with an in-house writing sample and mortuary science admission test completed in person during the interview. And also, you will have to submit the, the completed application along with a copy of your University of the District of Columbia Communication Community College identification card. And you can submit that to me. That's Professor John Kirksey, Acting Program Director at 4200 Connecticut Avenue, Northwest, Suite 200 28, Washington, D.C. 20008. And my email is john.kirksey at udc.edu. Admission to the Mortuary Science Program is only confirmed by an official acceptance letter sent to a candidate by the Mortuary Science program director and it is upon that receipt that you will be notified that you are indeed a mortuary science student um let's see thank that you so concludes, much. right that concludes that concludes my presentation and now we will be I guess we're going to take questions now. Is that right, Dr. Saeed? Okay. So if there are any questions, can you please uh, ask them? It's uh, You can put it in the chat or you can press the raise power button, raise your hands button.
Hi, this session is also being recorded and will be available on your website um, after today. Okay, good. And we have uh, Professor Kirksky's email address. If uh, you would like to ask any questions privately, you can ask him or you can ask me or Dr. Murphy or any of our faculty members. We are here to help you, guide you and assist you. Sorry, oh, we Carol's have a question. question. Yeah, we yes, have a question I... for people who graduate from this program. Oh, what? Sorry, I lost the question. That's okay. I, I have it. Her question is for people who graduate from this program. What do they typically do following graduation? Well, yeah. what is the the path look like for for the graduate? Okay, there are there are several paths you can take. This is not a static degree. Okay, yes, some people want to be a funeral director. Some people uh, just want to work at an establishment. Some people want to be owners. Okay, some people want to go into other aspects of the funeral industry. For example, some people might go into uh, industry. Okay, we have some people who work for casket manufacturers. We have some people. I know Miss Annette Foster finished our program. She is our a regional salesperson with Dodge, uh, not Dodge, but um, Batesville Casket. Okay, you can work for one of the chemical companies. We have people who do organ procurement, like um, Professor Angel King. I've had uh, three students I know when I recommended that to them or to suggested that those young ladies went out and got a job pretty pretty quickly. Um, we have some students who work for the DC uh, medical examiner's office. Okay, some people never want to be a mortician. They want to be at the at the ME's office. Okay, being an autopsy tech. Some people, as as they discover that they like being an autopsy tech, they may want to go ahead and go to medical school, and become a, 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 a the medical examiner, and uh, and performing the autopsies. As as the uh, as a as a pathologist, okay, we've had a couple of do do that. Um, so you can, and, and it's a degree where you can move around the country, okay. Um, funeral directors, as you find, especially since the baby boomers are dying, they're they're typically more more uh, uh, positions open than there are funeral directors to. To fill them, I talked to uh, Mr. Jenkins a couple of months ago uh, during the during the height of COVID, and he had 136 calls in one week. He said he had to turn people away because he couldn't handle it. Okay, his funeral home averages probably uh, 1,100 to 1,400 cases a year. Okay, so he's busy on, on normally, and uh, you put something on people like like the COVID uh, pandemic. And uh, he just can't handle the work because he doesn't have have enough people. So, and and you can go to different places. Uh, for example, some people like the West Coast, but you can get this degree and you can take it to the West Coast or the Midwest. And there are even opportunities outside the country. Okay, I know when I was a student, my embalming professor went to South Africa to teach embalming, and that's something I've wanted to do for a summer. Um, so there. Then you can get into also international trade of funeral funeral supplies. Okay, we also work with a company here, Arlington, and that's all those gentlemen do is supply funeral homes with with uh, funeral merchandise and supplies. So um, the possibilities are are vast. All right, Ms. Pillow, I hope that answered your question. Do you need me to expound upon it anymore? No, no, that answered it beautifully. Thank you so okay. much. Um, I have a, actually another question because I okay. I've sat in on a couple other seminars. I know that um, previous students in this program seem to have had a lot of opportunity for like volunteer within the program, and I was wondering if that was something that was unique, a unique opportunity during the pandemic, or something that often happens through this program. Uh, I, I believe you're referring to the uh, volunteer mission that they had with the DC Medical Examiner's Office. 
Yeah, I believe that was it. Yes. Well, as far as I know, that's still open for this summer. And 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 I know the students who volunteered at, by the end of the summer. I know they were offered positions, and that's probably the best way to get into the program because one that people get to see you work throughout the summer. They they see your work ethic, and they know what they're getting as an employee. So that's why that is a very uh, positive route for a student to take if that's what you want to do. Is, yeah, is to be involved how, how would with, we uh, have access to that opportunity? Well, um, you can send us an email that you are interested, and uh, any students who are interested, we will do a small vetting process, and we will recommend your names to the OCME. So they usually contact us. On our, this is an ongoing volunteer program, especially during the pandemic. They do contact. Uh, they send emails to me. I, I think Professor Kixi yeah. as well. So any student who is interested, you can send me an email and I will type my email address in the chat. Uh, it's uh, for those of you who are on live stream. My email address is Bushra dot Ahmed Saeed at UDC dot edu. And I'm also going to type it in the chat. Perfect. Thank you very much. Dr. Kirksey and Dr. Saeed. All right. Now, Ms. Pillow, uh, you're in a very fortunate uh, position right now because. As far as I know, I don't know if many other mortuary schools, if not any, have a uh, close working relationship with their medical office of the chief medical examiner. And so this is a, a, a uh, unique position that UDC find UDC students find themselves being able to take advantage of these opportunities. Any other questions? Good morning. Uh, my question is um, about the prerequisites. Um, uh, is that something that could be done between now and, and when this classes start? Uh, I do have transcripts from another school, but I don't know how many of those credit hours would be accepted. So um, what steps to be taken to get those uh, prerequisites done? Thank you. So, um, just a second. Amy. Thank you for your question, uh, Benjamin Baston. I appreciate it. And thank you for your interest in the program at University of the District of Columbia Community College. Uh, yes, we, we do accept prerequisite classes from other organizations uh, on the condition that the organization is nationally accredited. And we have a condition that our science courses should not be more than five years old at the time of application to the program. Uh, yes, we have a st uh, another uh, a student, uh, in fact, one or two students who are uh, in the similar situation as you. They are they have shared their transcripts with me, and uh, with Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy will um, analyze the transcript, make sure that the student, the student has done all the courses that are required, and you do have an opportunity in the summer session to complete any missing work or any missing courses that you might have. Yes, although March 1st was the deadline due to the pandemic, we are being flexible. Applications are still open, although our admission test is on May 7th. We are still accepting applications up till August 1st. August 1st, we will make our determination. So if you are interested, please immediately send Professor Kirksky and me an email with your uh, unofficial transcripts. We will immediately do a cost by cost uh, analysis. We will involve Dr. Murphy in this, and please we invite you to sit for the admission test. The admission test is only held on May uh, once a year on May 7th at 11 o'clock. All right, okay. so let us know how we can uh, do this. All right, we will be here to help you out. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess everybody knows everything. 
All right. Um, Professor, Dr. Murphy, is there any any questions or statements you might want to uh, propose to our uh, prospective applicants? We look forward to working with everyone. If you have any questions um, after this presentation, feel free to contact us and we'll be more than willing to answer any questions that you have. Sometimes you have questions after the presentation and we're more than willing to answer your questions. So feel free to reach out to any of us and we will be here to help you through the process. All Professor, right. what about, Professor what King? About you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Murphy covered everything. We're here to help you all. And if you need anything, just reach out to us and we will be available. We're used to it. We're funeral directors. We're available 24 7. Yep. All right. Uh, Dr. Saeed, is there anything you would like to ask in, in conclusion? Uh, just that thank you so much uh, to my faculty. Thank you so much to Dr. Murphy, to Jay for uh, organizing this uh, event. Uh, and we are here students, even those who are watching live stream, we are here to help you. We're here to assist you, facilitate you and, uh, to convince you that UDC. Is the, I would say, I'm proud to be a UDC uh, employee and I think that you will be proud to be a UDC graduate. It's all fired up. It's firebirds, right? And I think that this is a very good, strong program. It's nationally accredited program. It's accredited by the American board of funeral service education. Uh, we have good graduation rates, good employment rates. We have a very strong advisory board, a very strong affiliation with the external stakeholders, and you will be uh, taken care of by very good, uh, high qualified, passionate faculty and staff. So please join UDC. Welcome to UDC and uh, please uh, submit your letters of interest or your applications to us as soon as possible. Thank you so much. And Ms. McBride has a question. Ms. McBride, yes. can you hear us, Ms. McBride? She put in the chat that she has a question. Uh, Ms. McBride, can you please unmute yourself or can you please type your chat a question in the chat? And while we're waiting, Professor Calloway, he's a professor in the mortuary science program. He could not be with us today, but feel free to reach out to um, Professor Duane Calloway as well if you have any questions. He is a faculty member in the Mortuary Science Program who could not be with us today. Ms. McBride, are you typing your question in the chat? Because we are not hearing you if you're speaking. She says not letting her unmute. Just type your question in the chat, please. Okay, can you try now, Ms. Beck Brad, to speak? They're off mute, so I'm not sure what the issue is. Try again now. I was oh. in the chat she typed. I just yeah. wanted to know if 11 a.m. is the only time available to take the test. You can coordinate with me uh, separately offline because this is being recorded live stream and we are accommodating students to take the test before the due time, right? We have a student who's taking the test in fact right now. So you can coordinate with me via my personal email address and I will give you a separate time. Although the official time to take the test is May 7th at 11 o'clock a.m., you will be allowed to take the test before that, not after that. All right, in condition, you have to coordinate with me so that I can uh, deploy the test to you. Yes, again, you will be at work. We understand that you can coordinate with me and we will have a, the test arranged before that, probably on a Saturday or Sunday or tomorrow, whenever. All right, please send me an email and I will deploy the test at a time convenient to you. 
and we have interviews. Uh, we have interviews on May 10th at 11 o'clock. Again, those students who cannot do the interview on May 10th at 11 o'clock, again, you have to send us an email so that we can have the interview as a separate time for you uh, at a time convenient to you. All right, thank you so much. So you'll have a test and an interview. The test is on May 7th and the interview is on May 10th. Again, yes, students I, who have, I have one yeah. more question. Yes. Please. What does the test? Um, uh, what is the test? Um, yes, good question. What kind of test would it would it be? I'm sorry. Good question. It is a uh, We're going to test your mathematical skills, your reading skills, your writing skills, and your critical analysis, analytical thinking skills. Uh, we're going to test your anatomy, chemistry. So generally, all the students that you have, um, generally all the questions, all the material that you have studied in your prerequisite classes, uh, that should su suffice at that level. Uh, so hundred level courses, whatever you have done in your IGED, maths, English, anatomy, chemistry, uh, that should suffice. Okay. If you would like to have some practice, then you could go for SAT practice exams. Uh, I wouldn't say GRE, it's not at a GRE level. I would say SAT level. Okay, there's another question in the chat. If I took the test already, am I required to take the test again? Yes, you are. You, we, we are requiring fresh testing. You do not need to submit your application form again because it should be on file. I will have to check that. Uh, but if we don't, we will request you to submit your application as well. The reason is because the administration changed. We had the previous program director who uh, left and now we have a new program director here. So uh, we don't have uh, access to your test or your applications. We will coordinate with you again offline if we need more paperwork from you. Uh, but testing definitely you will have to retest. Because this time we are doing the test on Blackboard. Well, this is the first time that we're introducing a digital electronic test. This has never been done and to ensure consistency, transparency and accountability. We are uh, requesting all students to take the test irrespective of when you took it uh, before. Uh, am I right, Professor Kukski? Yes, you are 100% correct. Okay, good. So, is there any other question or comment? Uh, please let us know. If not, we can end this meeting.